You're listening to the Drummer Daily Podcast, the only daily podcast dedicated just to drummers. Go to my website at danielhadaway.com. Hey there, welcome back. Thank you for spending or choosing to spend some time with me again. Uh, Don't take it for granted. I'm really appreciative that uh, you're hanging out with me for a few minutes today. Um, So uh, I really appreciate that. Welcome back to Drummer Daily. Uh, So today... I thought we would, uh, I would give you a little like tip for maybe exploring something new in your drumming. Uh, so I, when I, when I play, I noticed that, um, some people, uh, after shows and things will bring up to me, Hey man, I love the way you play with your left hand. So that would be, um, I'm right-handed. So that would be like, you know, my snare drum hand. So my, my non-dominant hand, but I'm just going to. By the way, for the rest of this podcast, I'm just going to say my left hand because um, I'm <laughs> it's, uh, saying non-dominant uh, will get very, very quickly for me. So I'm going to say left hand. Uh, but if you're left-handed, this would be your right hand. Either way, uh, I uh, would get a lot of compliments on that. And I notice, like, I, I, I kind of pay attention to my playing when someone says something like that, something to me like that. The next time I play, I always try to pay attention to whatever it was they were talking about to kind of see. Because I don't, I don't think, a lot of times I don't think about... Um, the intricacies of what I do. I'm very intentional about the big stuff that I play, but some of the smaller stuff, um, as much as I preach about being intentional about everything, I still am a victim of my own habits a lot. So um, what I noticed though, like for example, this left hand thing is uh, my left hand does not, like for ghost notes and things like that, does not play what I think most people does not play the pattern that most people would default to when they're filling in ghost notes. I feel like what I do is a little different. And I started to kind of realize that, that part of the reason why this happens. So, um, and, and I, basically what I, what I, what I realized is that my left hand is in a way kind of unlocked from the typical kind of like, uh, you know, if, if my if my hands and my feet were working together like they were all gears on the same car and they kind of operate like a robot in a certain way, I think my 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 hands are free from each other working that way. They're not locked into any kind of pattern between each other that they're playing. Uh, my left hand kind of floats freely. Um, and for me at least, it wasn't very much of a natural, like it wasn't a slow progression to get to this point where my left hand can kind of freely play accents when it wants. It can fill in weird ghost notes that are maybe a little harder or a little unconventional. Um, I almost feel like, feel like it was a switch that flipped for me. Um, and I know when it happened for me, and I, so I kind of thought I'd explain that to you and then maybe give you a way that you can, you can mimic those results for yourself and see if it works. Um, so... I, uh, years and years ago, when my wife and I first got married, uh, we lived in an apartment, but I, of course, was a drummer, and so uh, I didn't have much of an option for playing drums uh, in an apartment. Um, Well, at the same time, uh, I was producing some records for some friends of mine and needed to record drums, um, but didn't have access to a studio, didn't even have... Uh, you know, didn't even have the drums set up in the apartment. There was nothing. I, I didn't really have many options. So long story short, what I did was I started using Superior Drummer, which is um, a great program that's a lot of fun to program drums with or, or get drum samples from, and using a keyboard with MIDI, like a, you know, a piano-type keyboard, and playing drum parts with that. Um, now... I was able, you know, with, with MIDI, you can draw things in after the fact, but I would try as much as I could when I'm listening through a song to kind of, I want to, I want to play something that I would naturally play, even though I'm programming it. So I would, you know, put my, you know, one or two fingers of each, on each hand on the keyboard, you know, line them up with a kick and the snare and the hi-hat or an cymbal or whatever, and, and try to play, you know, tap out with my fingers playing. Well, what I, what, what I quickly figured out was sometimes the the drums would be backwards so i'm I'm kind of i'm looking at my hands right now to figure this out how to explain this so uh sometimes i would end up playing with my right hand which normally would play a hi-hat i would be playing like a kick drum 
and a crash symbol or something. And then my left hand would, be, would have the hi-hat and the ride symbol. So what that means is my hands were forced to basically play the opposite roles that they normally play when I play a drum kit. So what, that ha what happened was I started, um, it was weird, it's a weird thing to have happen. If you've ever tried to play, if you, you, know, you play like a normal drum, like the, the way most drummers play, where your right hand's on the hi-hat, your left hand's on the snare. If you've ever tried to play open-handed, where you, you, know, you play with your left hand on the hi-hat and your right hand on the snare, you'll get the same thing. It's really weird when like your mind is still thinking the same way you would as a drummer. You're thinking of the same patterns, you're wanting to create the same thing, but, you're, but your hands are now forced to do something different opposite. Um, it's kind of familiar, but, but different. Um, and it took me maybe, I don't know, probably 10 times doing this at least before like it really clicked for me and it switched. But um, I realized that my mind was already, you know, was 90% was of the battle. It was that 10% of just not zoning out and not going on autopilot of playing on the keyboard. Um, if I could ever just kind of break through that and really focus on what I was doing, I could pretty much play anything I wanted you know, with two, you know, not too complicated, but you know, what you can play with two hands on a keyboard. So, what happened was, basically, I, like I said, around ten times into this, 10, 10 passes through a song, or the tenth time I tried this, it kind of just unlocked for me, and I was like, oh, like my, I don't have to play constant eighth notes with my right hand, which normally plays the hi hat. I can do something different. In the same way, I don't have to play. Um, you know, just two and four, a slow pattern with my left hand with, that would normally play the snare drum. I can, I can play more notes with my left hand and less with my right. Um, and so I would do some things like, I started doing patterns where I'd be playing, you know, eighth notes. Hopefully you can hear this over on the podcast, I'm tapping on my desk. Uh, play eighth notes with my right hand. So this would be my hi-hat hand. But then I'd be, play, I'd be playing sixteenths with my left hand. So I'd go... That's my left hand playing 16th notes. So all those accents and 16ths are on my left hand. And what I realized is that that's kind of a, that, that's a, that's a, I'm locking in the gears in a different way if I do that. But then eventually you kind of get to the place where you don't have to play every note. You can kind of leave some notes out, let it kind of float along. And now um, what's fun about practice is that no one is listening. You're not performing. So you can, you can afford to mess up a lot if you want to. So what I would encourage you to do is a couple of things. One is uh, switch up and play open-handed just for practice. So you play hi-hat with your left hand, snare with your right. And kind of get get a good solid, solid eighth note with your left hand, uh, and you know two and four with the snare with your right hand. But then start adding some accents in, so you hit harder on certain notes, and it can be any kind of place you want. It doesn't have to be two, you know one and three or anything. It can be some up upbeat, some like eighth notes on the upbeats. Anyway, play with your left hand like that, and play the snare on two and four, and kind of look, start just messing around with playing, um, playing open handed. And then try to add some ghost in the ghost notes in maybe with your with your right hand. Um, and then another exercise is to play, start working on playing the exact same pattern with both hands. So if you're gonna do 16th notes, maybe you could do like, you know, you, you could go back to putting your right hand on the hi-hat, left hand on the snare, and play like Something like that, you know, where you're, you're, you're mixing up eighth notes and sixteenth notes, but you're playing the exact same thing with both hands. What that starts to do is kind of train your left hand to kind of unlock itself from doing the same thing in relation to your right hand that it always does. Now, um, you might say, hey, well, wait a minute. If, you're, if I'm just playing the same thing as my right hand, aren't I just locking into something different? And, and the answer is yes, it, you can do that if you just play that way. Um, but what I've, at least what I've, I've experienced is that uh, for me, I used to basically play where if, if my snare drum hit was landing on beat two or four, I could play that at the same time as my hi-hat, you know, because my hi-hat would be landing on two and four as well, you know, when I'm playing eighth notes. But every other note in between would be the 16th note, you know, on the off beat of whenever I'm hitting the hi-hat. So uh, my left hand, uh, I would not spend any time focusing on. I, I think a lot of times, as drummers, we 
focus on, you know, the downbeat, the kick drum pattern, and hitting to and four on the snare. We don't spend a lot of energy focusing on the in-between stuff with our with our non-dominant hand. We don't need to focus on playing the hi-hat as much, um, you know, at first. You know, if we got if you're playing steady eighth notes, you can kind of let that go and, and, and dedicate some mental resources to something else. Um, and so these are just a couple of ideas, you know, these may not work for you. I could be just making this stuff up, but it worked for me. So I thought, hey, all I got is my own experience and what I've uh, done with other drummers uh, when I've taught lessons and things like that. So uh, I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, if not, you can just delete this episode from your uh, from your phone or whatever and listen to the next one because I'm not talking about this next time. Uh, but ho- I hope it's helpful for you. Uh, and try it out. Let me know what you think. Do a couple of exercises, change things up, and see what happens. All right. Until next time, I hope you enjoy your drumming. I am going to stop this recording so I can turn my space heater back on and stop freezing to death in my own house. All right. Bye.